One of the things that has been described about the American extreme underground scene is that bands have become mundane, that bands are no longer risk takers, that bands are no longer being dangerous and raw. I disagree with that. I think as a matter of fact, if for whatever reason, if someone's classifying that, if they're using those words to describe the underground, then obviously they're not aware of what the underground is. How do you feel about the American underground scene and where do you fit in it? Well, you know, American underground, what does it define it? Like, a lot of people, they try to be underground. They try so fucking hard to, like, have a raw recording. Try so hard to sound like shit. Like, they'll pay someone to make them sound like they were recorded in a fucking basement or a cellar or whatever. And they'll fucking go out of their way to have bad cover art, hand-drawn bullshit that looks like a fucking eighth-grade art class. You know, I can understand if you're a fucking eighth-grader playing death metal and you think that's what's evil and that's the best you can come up with, but if you're an adult trying to emulate some fucking trend, trying to copy something that, that you know, that you can never capture, it's fucking fake, and it's that's what people do to make themselves underground. It, it, they try to generate this fake underground credibility instead of just doing it your fucking self, and if people like it, they'll fucking like it, and if they don't, who cares? If you like it yourself, that's what fucking matters. What about you, dude? Yeah, and well, a lot of those older bands that had those real raw recordings, they weren't trying to sound like that. They were doing the best they could with what they had with whatever recording technology, whether it was on tape or whatever. So, you know, nowadays, I mean, it's so easy to get a clean recording. I mean, you could probably just get a new iPhone and make a better recording than a lot of people were doing back with a tape machine. But if you're, if you're trying to recreate something very specifically, it just to fit within a specific genre, that's not really what we're doing. We're doing something that is what we're into, and we're doing it the best that way that we can. And it's always been an evolution, and now with the newest material, it has evolved from where we started because we have progressed as musicians, and we've gotten new members that are better musicians or whatever, and now we're at a point where I am couldn't be happier with what we're doing, but, you know, it's not, I don't think it's, fitting into any kind of specific mold or, you know, this kind of injection mold type, you know, cookie cutter method of cranking out what people think is, you know, fitting this specific niche when really the, the characteristics that people are grabbing at to pull this out aren't even really the characteristics. There, there were accidents. So people yeah. are taking these accidents and turning them into specifics and that's you know, it's kind of just a misinterpretation, I think, a lot of times. You talked about new music. It's been a while since you released something. Talk to me about new music and the evolution of War Master. We, we kind of skipped an evolutionary step, I would say. Um, we had started writing new material with our old drummer, John, and then when he left the band, we kind of just got left stranded, and then when we got Dauber, we picked up where we left off with that, and then that evolved into something different. So there's kind of this evolutionary link that is missing right now, and we'll see what happens as a result of that. When you say that there's a missing link into the evolution, are you saying that, are you saying or describing the fact that you yourselves are at a stage where you're curious to see where you're going creatively? Well, what I mean... And are what, you amazed at what you are writing? I think that, you know, what you write, you're never satisfied. You want to write more stuff. And just because you release one album, it sounds a certain way, you don't want to define that for, your, you know, your entire right. fucking, like... Yeah, absolutely. Like, you want to grow. You want to grow, but yeah. not necessarily grow. You want do to try different, different shit. Yeah. You want to do different shit. I like raw, ugly death metal. I like slow death metal. I like fast, blasting death metal. I want to do all these things. Yeah. And sometimes on an album, you don't have enough time to fit all that shit on one fucking record. So you gotta go and, each album is like its own concept, it's like its own idea, and, and you want it to have a certain sound and a certain feel. But you can't just stick to a certain thing because, you know, when you're creating that kind of music, you yourself, you get bored with it. You wanna you want try to, new shit, dude. You wanna kick your own ass. You wanna right? kick right. your own fucking right. ass, man. Take it to a new level. Yeah, you, want, you wanna be able to be a 100% genuine in what you're playing. Right. And what I meant by the missing link is there's literally like a recording that doesn't exist, that never will exist. Because we were at a, a place and then we lost the drummer 
and then we got someone. So the record that would have existed maybe, you know, a year and a half ago. The dynamics have changed. Right. So that that's just you know, too bad. So sad for everybody. But we're we're here now, and we're doing what we are the most happy with, and we're going to Japan tomorrow. <laughs> Are you going to be recording this new material anytime soon? And when it's recorded. it's recorded, when will you be releasing it? We have a promo of the new album here tonight, and it's our first time making that available. Um, and then there's the Japanese cover version of it that we have. And then nice. that um, the full length album, we're hoping that will be out in July when we go play Obscene Extreme. Nice. Which we're also very excited about. This is interesting. This is something that I've always wanted to ask you. When I look at your cover art, and when I try to interpret your lyrics, because obviously, I'm just a listener. I, I go on my own journey, which is what I like about bands like yourselves. It allows me to go on my own journey. Is there a storyline behind your music and your songs, especially combining the art and the songs? Because for me, that reminds me of the old school element, when I'd get a record and sit there for days and weeks right. and dissecting it, it and, yeah. and I appreciate that right. especially now as an older gentleman because not only does it bring back the reminiscence and the joy of music but I like now that I'm older and a little wiser going on another journey like when I was 12 Right. Is there a storyline behind that? I wouldn't necessarily say a storyline because a story is very linear. A, a story begins and ends. It's just more of a concept, like it's an idea. Like each one, it might not take place in the same universe, but it, like there's shit going on where you can kind of similar themes, similar fucking ideas. You know, we have all these ideas for shit and, you know, our influences come from everywhere, man. Books, you know, you watch TV, you watch movies, you read comic books, you fucking, you know, everything. Other records and video games, all kinds of shit, man. All that shit that I think is cool, I want to kind of make my own thing that is cool. Like, create my own fucking world, my own universe where bad shit happens and people get killed and evil shit happens or whatever. But it's like, it's up to the fucking reader or to someone to read it and kind of envision it in their mind. It's not like a fucking story where there's like a hero and he does this and he defeats evil or whatever, but there's just fucking themes and there's shit going on and it's just supposed to be cool, man. You're supposed to enjoy it, read it. It's not like a story where it starts somewhere and it ends somewhere, but each album kind of has its own concept and the album cover kind of ties it in. So you can read it and then look at the cover and be like, Oh, that's from there. Oh, that's from the third track. That's from the fourth track. And it all kinds of ties in. And for us, it's interesting. It's something to keep it cool for us. If other people like it, I mean, awesome, awesome. I'm glad that they enjoyed it. I'm glad that they saw it. They, they recognized it. But for us, it's a way to keep the whole thing kind of tight in its own concept where the lyrics kind of match the cover and everything like that. Because it is a very art-driven band, and we like to do lots of cool art and have cool t-shirts and cool record covers and cool shit like that because this is our fucking creative vessel man this is like you know this is what we're creating which will will like our legacy or whatever you know yeah, this is where you're investing your energy this is where we invest our energy and this is where we're going to leave our shit and you know we want these records to still be around you know like when we're like not even fucking with music, man, hopefully these records will still be around and people can still like find them, listen to them, enjoy them and, and fucking, you know, be into them. One of the things that I appreciate, especially in this day and age, is the fact that artists like yourselves, whether you're doing it genuinely, whether you're doing it honestly, or whether you're just not even thinking about it, what you're doing is you're reinstilling the true values of music appreciation. We're in dealing with the generation where no one has an interest anymore. Right. They want it all quick. No one wants to yeah, go. They want to just swipe on their they, phone to the next. They want to download it now. They want. They don't want to go into the journey of right. going and looking at a record store and finding that album. They. They. They don't. They don't. They don't understand that pleasure. And with bands like yourselves, which you just described, the artwork, the lyrical content, the themes, the energy of the live show. Right. Subliminally, you're bringing that back. You're, you're breathing life into that. I appreciate it because I've seen it almost become extinct. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I wish you all a safe journey to Japan. Thank you for being in Los Angeles. They're about to fucking cause massive damage here in downtown LA. Final comments. 
when will you be taking this on a whole U.S. tour? I have no idea. Would you like to do that? I would There's no love set to do date, that. but you know, as long as the fucking war machine, as long as War Master's still pumping, dude. I mean, U.S. tour is great. It's fun. You know, once we have this album and it's finished and we're proud of it and we want everyone to fucking have it, we're gonna fucking hit the road and take it fucking everywhere, every fucking city. There you go. You heard it. Watch out for the new War Master. How can people get a hold of the new tunes and keep updated with your band? Find us on the fucking internet, man. <laughs> Type in War Master. Fucking search for it. Find it. It's on YouTube. It's all over, man. Fucking nerds that have computers. They can fucking find it. They can email us, whatever. They can get it. If they want it bad enough, they'll fucking get it. Go get it.